Aloha. Welcome everyone to uh, Christ Lutheran Church in Mililani Town. I'm Pastor Keith Walter, and I am the I'm the head minister here. And uh, we have a lot of lay ministers, and I am grateful to God for all of our lay ministers. Uh, we are a, a minute or two slow here because just as we got ready to get started, everything started blowing. So uh, and a bunch of stuff went flying. I'm going to try and light this candle, or this candle one more time. There we go. Well, one note uh, for the liturgy, uh, when it comes to the communion distribution, we have a uh, five or six uh, uh, grape juice cups in, in here, and they are the light yellow colored uh, grape juice so that you can tell the difference. So if you prefer grape juice, uh, we will have that. We have that available. And then we also, as, as usual, have the gluten-free here as well. I think that's all in terms of, uh, I need to mention right now in terms of how the liturgy is proceeding. This is the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. And uh, we are going to begin uh, with the confession and the forgiveness, because it seems an appropriate thing to do uh, in the light of the readings that we'll be uh, hearing in a few moments. So those of you here in person, I invite you to stand as you are able, and we will begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. We pause for a moment of silent reflection. together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we will sing all four verses of hymn 787 on eagle's wings. Here we can hum for one more week. Uh, and those of you on Zoom can sing. We'll do all, all four verses.
Thank you, Emily. We haven't sung that one or hummed it for a while. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We speak the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. E pule kako. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom. Make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from Isaiah. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was a punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain when he make his life an offering for sin. He shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous and he shall bear their inequities. Therefore, I will, allot, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. The 91st Psalm, because you have made the Lord your refuge. And the Most High your habitation. No evil will befall you. Nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you. To guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up. Lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion cub and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who cling to me. I will uphold them because they know my name. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life, I, 
will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. A reading from Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but take it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been de designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. According to Mark, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us what of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left hand, glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand, or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the 10 heard this, they became angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you, you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So for the Keiki story, and I have it on good authority that there are Keiki listening all over the United States. I don't think there are hundreds and thousands of them, 
but I think there are a few of them. And I was told there's one in particular or two maybe in one of the Carolinas. And so I'm not sure if they were listening at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. So here we go. Jesus and his disciples walked along a dusty road. James and John had something to ask Jesus. They ran to catch up with him. Out of breath, they said, hey, Jesus, can, can you just slow down a minute? Jesus stopped. What can I do for you? The brothers said, we want to ask you a favor. We were wondering if maybe in heaven, we could sit next to you, one on your right and one on your left. And Jesus said to them, you are good friends, faithful disciples, but every person has a special place in heaven. No one gets a place that is more special than anyone else's. Jesus called the disciples together. He told them the best way to serve him was to serve others. He helped them understand that he had come to help people and wanted them to do the same. So, Keiki, if you could ask Jesus one question, one question, what would that be? Like James and John, you get to ask a question. And I know that one of the cakey listening, when she was here and we were all sitting down front, liked to ask me lots of questions while mom and dad were in the back going like this. So if you're listening, Catherine, go ahead and ask mom and dad as many questions as you want. Pastor said it was okay. And now I'm in trouble. <laughs> you know, these, those disciples, they're just having a hard time figuring it out. The last few weeks, I don't think it was every Sunday, but the last few weeks we've had as the first reading, the four servant songs of Isaiah, Isaiah 42, 49, 50, and now 53. And 53 is the epitome or the crescendo, you might say, of those servant songs saying the servant has come to rescue Israel, to rescue those in need, and will suffer for doing it. We usually read Isaiah 53 on Good Friday, but once in a while it pops up in ordinary time. Because the Gospel of Mark, the passages we've read from it the last few weeks, have reflected back on the suffering servant songs. Jesus has been predicting several times, I am going to Jerusalem to die. I am going to Jerusalem to be crucified. And the disciples are like, what? Which gets us to the point of these last few weeks, I think. And it is this. God's ways run counter to human thinking. God's ways run counter to our ways. The first will be last and the last first. Children matter. Children matter in a culture where children often did not make it to the age of five. They were not highly valued until they got past that age. 
in the ancient world because you couldn't emotionally get that attached to them if you were going to lose so many. Some cultures, even today, some cultures are careful about naming children much before the age of three or four or five because you're not sure if they're going to make it. And so children were not highly valued. And Jesus said, what? The faith of a child. And they're like, and that's not a cute thing. It's a what? God's ways are not our human ways. Those who lord it over everybody else who will be tyrants, they will be brought low. And those who are of humble means will be exalted. There is no hierarchy, says Jesus. No greatest of the great, not on earth nor in heaven. No one gets to sit on the right or the left. And may be the most confusing of all is that the ever living and eternal God will die. God dies on a cross. The last place you expect to see God is on a cross. But there Jesus is. And those who follow Jesus are called to pick up their crosses and follow him to Calvary, the hill of execution. God's ways run counter to all our ways. And so the frequently asked question in Mark, the FAQ of Mark is this, will Jesus' disciples ever get it? Will they get that God is not here to rule with the sword from a throne, but in love from a cross, dying for others? The disciples, for about the umpteenth time in Mark, in this passage, and this is the last one, but for the umpteenth time, they keep saying, who is the greatest of the great? They turn children away. They harass others who don't belong to their group, who are speaking Jesus and healing. And as for Jesus, whenever he says, I'm going to die, they rebuke him or fall silent in fear. They avoid suffering like the plague. And when anything looks tough, they run for it. And there's just a hint of a temptation to violence. Will they get it? This isn't just about being nice and helping people in need. This is about asking yourself, will I get it? Will I understand that God's ways are not necessarily my ways? And that is the aha moment for us 2,000 years later. God's ways run counter to all of our ways. See all of the above that I just listed. And now we must ask, are we getting it? The crucified God, the suffering servant, the Messiah, who do, does not rule from on high, but sits among us, a crucified God, loving us, living with us, dying with us. It is redemptive suffering, brothers and sisters, redemptive suffering, not redemptive violence, that is the path of Jesus. I've had a cartoon, I got it on a coffee cup, and I've mentioned it a few times over the years, and I was going to try and get the cartoon to flap up here, but we were fine-tuning the microphone system, but and so we couldn't get to it, but, but there was a picture of Jesus sitting on a big old construction beam, like high up on a skyscraper that's being built. Jesus is sitting up there in his, in his white robe, looking like Jesus, I suppose. And around him are superheroes. There's Thor with his hammer, Mjolnir. There's Superman with his cape. There's Captain America with his shield. 
There's Spider-Man hanging upside down. I think that's why he's on the I-beam, so Spider-Man can hang upside down and look up at Jesus. And the other ones are all, all leaning in, and there's a whole bunch of superheroes, and, and there's, there's a couple different cartoons around that, but you get the point. And they're all leaning in, and Jesus is smiling and saying to them, and this is how I saved the world. He didn't save it with a hammer of Mjolnir. He didn't save it with Captain America's shield or Superman's cape or even Spider-Man's web. That's redemptive violence. That's not the way you win. Which is why I no longer watch Marvel movies. I hope there's nobody from Marvel in the congregation today. And if so, listen up. The way of Jesus is not the way of John Wayne. That's another sermon, another time. It's coming. I'm warning you now. But the way of Jesus is not the way of superheroes or John Wayne. The way of Jesus runs counter to human ways of thinking, being, and acting. And so the FAQ for us is the same. Will we get it? The same question that Mark is asking in his gospel story of Jesus is the same question we ask, especially in these turbulent times where everything is just complicated and fast changing and uncertain and anxiety ridden, what I like to call turbulent. Will we get it? Will we follow Jesus, welcoming the unwelcome, caring for the children, not bowing to tyranny and fascism, not violently redeeming ourselves at the expense of others and their suffering, not yelling, I have my rights, no mandates, it's all about me. Or will we say a look and ask about suffering, giving of ourselves to redeem others, even those who might crucify us? Will we ever get it? This is where the pastors, you know, kind of like then launch into, you're not getting it, you sinners, you're, it's awful, you're out, ah, boom, 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 you know, and I beat you down so, right? I make you feel so bad that you thank me at the end of the service. Please. I may not always be optimistic, but you know what? I am hopeful. When I look around the room and see who's here, when I look up here, I have to, I have to turn around to see you guys on Zoom, right? So then you, well, man, I am bald. Okay, I'm not going to turn around anymore. When I look around and see how steady we have been over these years in worship, how steady we have been in work around this place and the work of service that we take into our communities. When I see how you share your wealth with the church, with the community, when I see all of this, I am hopeful. When I see, read in the paper this morning about the vaccinations going up, and I see people talking about the hand washing and the distancing, and, and everybody's, I am hopeful. If the disciples in the end didn't get it, I doubt if any of us would be here, or anybody in the 2000 intervening years. I am hopeful because cross is not the last word. Resurrection is the last word. Death is not the last word, even though it's all around us. Life is the last word. And in and through it all, you and I in our conversations, in our deliberations in church council, in congregational meetings, 
and all the small talk in between, I hear all of us saying in our own way, am I, are we getting it? We can ask it in all sorts of daily ways. One of the ways I do it when I get up in the morning, I ask myself, how can I, we, remain faithful to Jesus and his way of the life of the cross? How can I, we, live a moral life? That is, make good choices, do the right thing. By asking these questions humbly and in trust, we acknowledge over and over that God's ways are not our ways. We live by God's grace in Christ alone. We are open to the promptings of the Spirit each and every day. We get it, brothers and sisters. We get it when we question everyone who announces they got it and that we better listen up. That includes ourselves. It begins with ourselves. This is the way of the cross. God's ways are not our ways. And by thinking that, by thinking that, we give the spirit of Jesus some breathing room, some breathing room to create faith, hope, and love in our hearts and in our communities. And that spirit, over and over again, helps us get it one more time. Thank God for one more time. Amen. The hymn of the day is number, hymn number 351, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. And if you listen to the words, it goes from one verse to the next and flows. So we'll sing all four verses. Emily, if you would, please.
Thank you, Emily. Now I invite you to stand as you are able and let us confess our faith in the triune God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit of all upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in as many forms and a and equip them with your gifts. E ka haku. E aloha mai. Creating one for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that endangered birds, geckos, sea turtles, dolphins, and all living things flourish as you intend. E ka haku. E aloha mai. Suffering one for all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. E ka haku. E aloha mai. Merciful one, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, COVID-19, or any illness, especially all those whom we name in our hearts and whose names we now speak aloud. For Jim, Judy, Jennifer, Richard, Cliff, Dick, David, Janet, Jessica, Carrie, Maggie, Mary, Melissa, Michael, Hattie, Sally, Steph, Uncle Keith, Vicki, Eugene, Young Joel. that all may be healed. E ka haku. Aloha. Sustaining one for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, Christ Lutheran Church, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage greeters, ushers, altar caretakers, counters, assisting ministers, lawnmowers, council members, teachers, students, evangelists, plumbers, and singers, gardeners, nurturers, and all who serve with generous hearts. E ka haku. E aloha mai. Remember those with birthdays this week, especially Dick, Jackie, 
Tina, Rick, and Linda. Remember those celebrating baptismal anniversaries also, especially May. May their days be full of laughter, life, and joy. E ka haku. E aloha mai. We pray for the communion of saints on the big island known as Lutheran Church of the Holy Trinity and their pastor, Brian Keezer. May you keep them safe in these troubling times, even as they witness and serve their neighbors in need. E ka haku. E aloha mai. Risen one, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of your saints, continue to inspire us with hope until we all are gathered at your eternal feast. E ka haku. E aloha mai. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Aloha nui eoko, o ke aloha o kahaku e mau anameako, a paoloa. Friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters, the peace of Christ be with you always. And you know whom you can hug and whom you can wave to. And you may, you may be seated. I don't want the piece to stop too fast. Okay, you may be seated. And I want to say, I said thank you a lot in the sermon. I won't say it a lot again right now. Just thank you for being here, for your worship, your work, and your sharing of your wealth. Emily, if you would please, the offering song creates in me. Continue with the prayer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care. <clears throat> and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The Lord Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are indeed. Perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks for his coming into the world before. in which he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant blood poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and to be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be our honor and glory in your church, now and forever. Amen, amen, and amen. Gathered into one by pray Jesus has taught us. as we forgive those who trespass against us. Temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Endeavor. Amen. Na makana a keakua, no kapoe a keakua. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come. Come. June, the body of Christ is broken for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Dale, the body of Christ is broken for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Naomi, the body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of dead for you. Yeah, the body of Christ is broken for you. Blood of Christ. Sure. The blood of Christ is shed for you. The body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ. Bob. The body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Valerie. The body of Christ is broken for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Landon, the body of Christ is broken for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Nelson, the body of Christ is broken for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. The body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. And Emily, the body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. 
And for those of you who are worshiping with us online, if you have at hand at this moment uh, bread and wine or something reasonably close like grape juice like we have here, uh, then you may take it up. If you do not have anything with you, you may still commune with us and Jesus by receiving these words in faith. The body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Announcements. The wind is up. There goes the mask. There goes the candles. It's a safe place, right? Lots of ventilation. Ooh. A couple of announcements. Reminder, council members, that we meet via Zoom uh, this afternoon at 2.30, and we have a lot to talk about, including when and whether to resume singing behind our masks here in church. I'm beginning to think... Uh, well, everybody reports here as, as vaccinated and everybody is getting it. So let's think about that either next Sunday or Reformation Sunday in two weeks. You know what color you're supposed to wear on Reformation Sunday, right? What color is it? Red, good. Also, does anyone here know how to pour cement? Shirley, you any cement? No, okay. anyone else? I was just a guess. Okay. Uh, for, for cement, grab if we want to um, fill in the no longer used uh, sandbox out here. To uh, gather under if we have small groups and there are no screaming kids running up and down the playground. So, uh, anybody who knows how to pour cement. Scouts have already looked at this and said that that's way we can do for a, a, a project. Uh, so uh, we're asking around to see if there's anybody that you know. Also, uh, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we just want to remind everybody to stay up to date on uh, holidays are coming. Uh, I think they're stuck in the port of Los Angeles. So, uh, and the tracking number they gave us doesn't work, of course. So we'll just figure that out, but we're looking at it. And thanks to uh, uh, Landon and Nelson today, we, had, we did some fine tuning and I hope, hope it came out okay with these sort of uh, uh, micro, borrowed microphones. Uh, the Living Lutheran for this month is on the back table, the October one. And uh, it's, I don't, I don't, but there's some good articles in it. So, uh, including by a classmate of mine uh, from Trinity Lutheran Seminary, Ken Wheeler. And it's very good. And I've got some uh, obituaries to know. Walt Wangerin, who wrote The Book of the Dun Cow and a bunch of other, uh, he was a good old Lutheran professor. Uh, I loved his books when I was younger. And he passed away. For those of you who were in the American Lutheran Church before, uh, um, the merger of the ELCA, 
last president of the American Lutheran Church, David Preuss, passed away. At the good old age of 99, I want to make it to 99 because I want to know what happens. I want to just, then again, maybe I won't, but I want to think I do. I just want to know. And there's a, a couple of key obituaries that uh, might be worth uh, taking a look at. And I th think that's it for the announcements. Have I missed anything? Please stand then as you are able for the benediction, the sending song, and the dismissal. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. We will sing two verses of Lord now, the Lord now sends us forth. And there is one verse in English and one verse in Spanish. And you can sing in any language you would like. How does that sound? And we'll sing two verses of it. Emily, take it away. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you.